never, never been asked or invited or the occasion has never arisen. Well, it does, actually, since you rang, called me on the telephone, I've been thinking about it. And it's amazing the things I've recalled, you know, that I hadn't thought about for 60 or 70 years, probably. No, Your my, choice. My choice. I wanted to be an architect. Yeah. Probably encouraged by my next door neighbour, Bob Pierce, but because uh, he, that was his focus and I became interested in, even in talking to him and I thought that would be a, a good uh, area to, to um, try and develop my skills. Yeah. Well, I had a lot of interest in building itself and uh, the history of building and architecture. That became a sort of, a, not an obsession, but certainly a, an interest outside of my sporting interests and things like that. And, uh, and I thought it would be a good, good way to get a sort of a basis for my further career, a future career. Well, there was, the, we could see a, a, an opportunity there because, the, I mean, the house we lived in was a government house. And all the area, a lot of area, the Kendall area was government as was a lot of the uh, Hutt Valley. But we could see that, uh, in my mind, that was had to be a, an opportunity, either building or architecture, one, one or the other. And uh, so that was my focus at that time. Now, my father proved it, but he went to Wellington College, as did his uh, four brothers. Um, in fact, my Almost the whole family went to Wellington Boys College. I'm talking my father's mm -hmm. brothers and, and their, their kinfolk. So it was a departure from the usual Tonks, although Gary Tonks, of course, as you know, went to Wellington Tech. But I didn't know that until just the other day, as a matter of fact. Well, we had to get a train for a start from Kandala Station to, to uh, Wellington railway station and then get a tram from the station to Tech. So it was a double uh, uh, whammy there and it was, it was quite a long... I mean, we didn't think about it frankly enough because the trams were full of people my age and it, we just sort of didn't even think about that sort of stuff. But, but, but our uniform, I'm not sure what it was later, but our uniform was navy blue in Tech when I went there. And that was a beggar to keep clean. I tell you, navy blue shorts and and shirt. And the girls had brown, didn't they? They had brown, yeah. Not exactly the first day. Uh, I think that'd be a hard one for me to get back. I hadn't even thought about it, matter of fact. But um, I know we were taken into the building um, and workshop area and shown around the school. I can remember that quite clearly, but I can't remember much else about it. Oh, we were told we were on the, we were in the, um, had an assembly and given a sort of a lecture on what was required of us, and then taken outside and all the houses, we were put into houses at that point. And I can remember that was on the first, I'm not sure the first day, certainly the first week. Um, you, had, you had to learn the, um, the, um, the origins, uh, uh, origin of Seddon, what, what, what it meant, and Richard John Seddon, all that sort of stuff. And the same with the Wilding House and, and the Bowen House and the others. But um, we went through that sort of exercise with the, um, with the um, various prefix, I think, took us for that, if I remember correctly. I'm talking about the Seddon pre prefix of the Seddon House. Yeah, we had, I can remember that. And, but we also um, had, had these um, cross-country races up around, which I used to hate. But I, and I do most sports, but cross-country running wasn't a favourite of mine. And uh, 
So we used to have to run right around Mount Victoria and come right back to Tech again, and that was a, uh, always a problem for me. Then I, that's, I didn't enjoy that at all. But Tech basically in those times was very um, a, 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 a basketball um, was ver a very big sport because Pat Whelan and Flo Sadler were there. And they were both uh, heavily involved in national basketball, and they were both um, teachers at Tech. And, and most of our uh, train, uh, um, athletic training, or uh, what do you call it, a uh, PT, physical training, there was a big element of basketball involved in all that. And that's a good course too. Very much so. I mean, uh, the, the girls actually really made a name for themselves at Tech, more so than the boys. The boys, later in life, if you look at the uh, when uh, the boys became 19, 20, 21 at that age, a lot of them played um, representative rugby for Auckland or Wellington or whoever. I mean, it was the Alan Clarks, the Laurie Pearson. They were, we, we became, in fact, in our team, the Onslow rugby team that won the Jubilee Cup in 1955, I think about eight of us, seven or eight of us, had come from Tech, and none of us had made the first 15. I didn't play for, uh, no, I played for the school uh, in a couple of lower grades um, and I played in the first 11 or one or two, on one or two occasions too. But uh, 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 I always really wanted to go back to the club. I had no, no real incentive to play for the college and there was a lot of people like, like me. Creeping Jesus. Creeping Jesus. I, I, I remember, well, that's how he used to walk around the place. But he was there in my first year, and I think Cousins, Mr. Cousins, became director in my, either my second year or my third year. I know that changed. Very much so. We had a hymn book, and, um, and it was pretty vigorous sort of singing too, but because you were, you were sort of encouraged to do that. But that was exactly what happened. He, he the director was the director, and uh, and well respected. I can say I say that. Yeah, but that's uh, you got caught out very quickly on that. I mean, most people tried that, but from time to time, but there was. Uh, a lot of uh, there's a lot of sort of disciplines within your class group, but your your staff um, every every um, class has its own class monitor, which I happen to be one in this first and second year. He, he was sort of um, not a prefect, but he was. You had a badge, and you were sort of uh, you, you became the sort of spokesman for the for the class. And, uh, and and in charge of not so much discipline, but you sort of kept an eye on people if they were misbehaving. You sort of had a little word to them. That was part of your responsibility. But if, if something had to be done um, collectively in the school, all the class monitors would meet of that of that particular age group, and it, it was quite an interesting. You weren't called down a hell of a lot, but they, it certainly was a, 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 a um, uh, status sort of situation. It was quite a. It was. If you're, I, I haven't. I'm not sure how we we got there. Whether we were elected, or the form master appointed you. I have no idea. It might have been the latter. Uh, That's right. Yeah, I remember that. But they were, they were for their time. They were very very well um, presented gyms. They were good to train in because the the, the, um, the floor was good and it was solid. Mm -hmm. and, uh, no, I, I always enjoyed PT there, but I, I did particularly enjoy people like the Pat Whelans who were in charge of it. They, they seemed to be a pretty good bunch of guys. From the high bars, the horses, the um, basketball, they had hoops there, and we spent a lot of time doing hoops with basketball. And the white shorts and singlets? Yeah, yeah, white shorts and singlets. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah that was all part of it.
that was, yeah. Yeah, well, that was a that was a, a, a real shame. It cur- curtailed my last year at Kandala School, and I was one of three people running for the um, um, Duxville School, and that was just. I mean, you were there one day and gone. I mean, it just closed. I mean, we didn't know it was closing. It was closed. And I don't think we started again in tech till March, I think. And, but we had correspondence school. And that's where my, my uh, neighbour, Bob Pierce, he'd been through all that. So that was a hell of a help to me because it was all foreign to me, that the building architecture type um, study. Yeah, uh, two months earlier. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I think, I'm only going from memory now, but we didn't seem to be there long, and someone in the school got polio. And I think there was, it must have been June, July, July must have been, when there were school holidays, and I think that was extended, because they closed the school again in that first year, I see. It was a bit disruptive, as far as I was concerned. Rossa, um, he had a list. Yeah, yeah, he was the building fellow, and um, but the others were more more on the well, the history of architecture or architecture itself, drawing and engineering, all that type of thing. So tech drawing, yeah, they were all separate cars. We had tech drawing. There was all kinds of architectural drawing type classes. And, uh, which were interesting, you know, but, but it could be kind of a little boring because it, it became repetitive, and, and uh, I didn't enjoy that a hell of a lot. But that that was certainly there it had to be done. Yeah, it, maths was probably my best subject right through my school career, and we in my second year we had a, I think he might have been our form master, Jim Bateman. And he was absolutely outstanding. And he also took a lot of sport. But he, youngish guy, but he had our whole class eating out of his hand. And he, I mean, my marks in that second year were probably as high as I've ever got anywhere. And uh, but it was all, I, I, he made it interesting. But he was also a tremendously good teacher. He also coached my rugby team, and I was taking that second year. And. Um, we, we we got to know him pretty well in his family because he used to have functions at his house, and this is quite unusual in those days. But uh, but he was a very very good master. I don't know. It, it, my father was good at maths. My brother wasn't so good, but um, but it was always there's one subject that I always like to get stuck into, and, and algebra was one of my best. Subjects and that most people couldn't even understand it. And, uh, yeah. Don't ask me to do it today because <laughs> I couldn't do it. But but al- al- algebra and geometry and uh, ar- well, arithmetic itself were always very strong subjects for me. At, at that did became a real interest for me after in my second year. And, uh, and frankly, that's why I left in, my th- in the third year, because my uncle, who was a, uh, one of the heads of a company called Murray Roberts, Stock and Stays Nation, they had a vacancy down there which l- led to an administrative type thing, even when I was 16, 17. And I sta- so I started there. It was a good opportunity, and I've never regretted that, because even though I didn't go on to university, it um, gave me other opportunities, and uh, which really led to where I ended up and uh, um, owning a big, quite a big business. Music didn't interest me one bit, but science I hated. And uh, I don't know if it's because it's so boring and, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those subjects that I hardly even took an interest in. I totally agree. Absolutely. That would be, in my case, I could. It absolutely endorse that. So and that's where Jim Bateman, it, it wasn't just um, the, the relationship in the, in that particular 
former witness, arithmetic, or maths, I should say. Um, but he was interested in, he got interested in a few of us and really encouraged us to do things. In fact, I took a real bath from him and I told him, he was the first person I told him I was leaving. And uh, he gave me an absolutely telling off because uh, he felt I could go to university and be, be something different. And uh, that was, uh, and I can remember that quite clearly. And this was a one-on-one. -on -one, and then we went back into the classroom and he gave us all the lecture. But <laughs> and and I, do you deserve it? I, well, I didn't like it at the time because I felt I was doing the right thing. And as it proved out, I did do the right thing because I wouldn't have been where I am today if I hadn't. But um, but my whole life would have been something different, completely different, if I kept on going in the area. Because I think I'd have ended up in a county type role mm -hmm. rather than building architect. A strange person, but he had a, a style that you remember things. And, and don't ask me why, but he he was uh, he he, uh, he had some he had a lot of ability in in his own style of doing things, of lecturing, or administrating the educational programs. Um, but I always did well with him, and uh, so. But he, he, he was completely different from any other master I've ever had in my life, or any other teacher I've ever had in my life. Uh, but we used to, uh, he was OE. But there was two Burtons there. There was him and another, another Burton. Both his masters at the same time. J.B. Burton. J.B. Burton, yeah. And he was in charge of social studies. Social studies, yeah. And he was, um, he was inclined to be a bit bore, boring. And uh, <laughs> it didn't sort of... Um, it attracted a lot of interest from our, our class anyway. That, I, I think when that we were joined, when we were in S3A2 in that third year, I think we had a class with O.E. Burton. I think that was one of the classes that were joined together. I mean, since you first mentioned over there before, I've been trying to get my mind on that. I, don't recall in my first year being going on with girls anywhere, but I know in that third year we definitely did. I did one play. Uh, I was in, uh, I think it might have been Pirates of Byzance. But they did at least one production per year, probably two. And, uh, uh, which was, but they did it really, really well. You know, with the, the dress and the, and, and the, uh, the um, I forget who, which master led that now, but whoever it was was very much in their element as an art teacher. Hey. Clement Howe, Clement, it wasn't Clement Howe. Clement Howe was an older guy. Um, and I found it very difficult to follow. Might as well wasn't a hell of an interest in, but very difficult to follow. He was very much the musician. I remember him quite well. He's a shortish, oldish fellow. And uh, I can't remember who did the, the actual plays themselves. He possibly wasn't included. He, he may well have been in there, but doing the music part of it. In fact, I suggest he must have been, but I hadn't noticed him there. But there was someone else that actually led that. And, and, um, you know, just for the moment, I just can't recall who that was. There was, but I think it was one of those. I was in the. It was the early days for me. Uh, for uh, when they, um, they, they, they were changing during my time there. It, it, um, even with um, not only not so much the school subjects, but the attitude was changing from from above. And uh, I think it started to change under uh, Mr. Cousins' um, term. And um, and it, it changed from there on in. Yeah. It, uh, but when um, Mr. Riddling was there, it, it, it didn't change a hell of a lot. I know he was easy easy going, but he was also a disciplinarian and uh, and kept, he was remote. You know, as someone calls him, creeping Jesus. Well, that was a pretty good <laughs> name for it. <laughs> Thank you.
I mean, I think the, it's a funny memory, but the cafeteria, all the uh, food was made by the um, girls that were there. And I remember the sandwiches went up from one, pen, one, one pence to two pence for a full sandwich. But, um, but I, I was always, uh, buying lunches there was, a, they were nice too, I mean they made good, good stuff. But it was the cheapness of everything. And that really appealed to me at the time, because I had no money and my family didn't have a whole lot of money. And, uh, so you get a dash good lunch for, you know, sixpence or something like that, that would buy you a real bonanza. Those, no, no, the schools, at, schools at Yui were predominant. They were the two um, um, qualifications that most people went for. Probably, although the company, I know I started off with Murray Robertson Company, but then um, they had an American company agency for sausage casings, that's how I got into that business. And that American company wanted it to start themselves rather than to go through agent, sausage patient agency. And they asked me would I join them, and that was probably the key to my life. Because they ran their own internal um, educational systems for young people like myself. And, um, and, the, and that's where I really got into accounting in quite a big way, because their systems were so much ahead of New Zealand accounting, commercial accounting at that point, where they weren't funny. So they made you go through courses, and not only practical courses in the um, field I was in, which was sausage casings at that point, you had to work in a factory for six months in Australia, and then I had to go to Montreal for three months and things like that. And then there was a couple of older people here that worked for the American company, um, and they took me around for probably two years, and then then, then I became a managerial protege, and I had to go to the States for educational courses and all that type of thing. So it really gave me a formal education which I had missed not going to university. That was, no question about that. And I was always uh, the captain or vice captain of the various sports teams too. It's, um, that's quite interesting, but I, I hadn't even thought about that until just you know, over the last year or two when I started to think about some of these, these things. And, and uh, yes, so I, I was the class monitor, and, 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 but even in other areas I was in a, a, a authoritative, you might say, capacity. Mostly, even on the sports teams, I was elected captain or vice captain, things like that. I'm, I'm, I think it's probably the way you're brought up, in the, in the, because my father made sure that my brother and myself were self-supportive, and, and uh, I think that had a hell of a lot to do with it. No doubt about that at all. I became more confident in myself, um, even though I. Um, had a lot of leadership opportunities and, and, and I was elected in leadership. I wasn't totally confident that I was doing the right thing at the time, but I, that three years I grew in stature and, that, and then the following three years that they were working for the Murray Robertson Company, then the American Company. Uh, the American Company did probably more for me than any anything. It just brought, gave me more confidence to do things. Probably, personally, was the many friends I met there, which I still have been lifelong friends. Uh, that's really stuck with me, and it uh, um, doesn't matter where they come from. Uh, that uh, there's been a huge, there's been a huge part of my life, and that's why, I've, and a couple of other people, uh, George Blair and Bruce Hill and Co. That's why we've been so keen, and I've been so keen on pushing reunions. Uh, and I'm, I'm 83 now, we're still having reunions of teams that we played for in 1945, 46, 48, 50.